I don't want to be in your new world order hell. Look at the EU commission. Merkel's threatening the UK not to leave. Merkel warns the UK of isolation if Brexit, Brexit exit camp wins vote. Talk about walking corpses, unholy living dead. Uh, Hillary's this low energy goblin zombie. And you look at her followers. I mean, I'm sorry. I don't care what color they are. They look like a bunch of reanimated dead people. David Knight's coming up to haunt you the rest of the broadcast the next segment, but I'll take calls. I'm going to stay, stay with him and, you know, go for a while. Uh, I did a two-hour workout yesterday, and I did like an hour one this morning, and it just it killed me. And so when I'm low energy and struggling, I'm just going to keep going. That's the answer. Just keep going till you find the other side of that. Uh, but <laughs> my low energy days are most people's high energy days. That's kind of bad for folks got to be around me all day, though. But uh, stealth laws attack privacy and travel. That's coming up. Has Facebook become a black hat hacker? Absolutely. Newly disclosed CDC biolab failures, likely a screenplay for a disaster movie. Autonomous cars, smart highways, and the road to serfdom. La Raza, groomed by globalists. We're going to get to all this coming up. But the big thing is the attack uh, on free speech with the EU commission that's unelected announcing what it's going to do. But let's talk to social justice warrior. Uh, that's SJW from California to hear what they have to say. I'm told they disagree with everything. Uh, so go ahead. Are you able to talk? Can you talk? Let's see if we can have a cogent conversation without you making ad hominem attacks. There is no Don't way you're a social justice warrior. You're actually able to talk. Uh, is this a fake phone call? We're already starting with your ad hominem attack. Okay, we're not in debate class, brother. Hillary gave the missile yes, secrets to the communist Chinese. Okay, I mean, you, you support a traitor. Go ahead. Stop, Alex. Stop, Alex. Stop, Alex. Let me sound real smart. Go ahead. Tell me Tell me how the cow ate the cabbage. I'm, I'm really honestly going to ask you a question. If you can stop talking for 25 seconds, I will send you $500. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, let's see what you have to say. Start the clock, Alex. You know, Alex, one thing I've got to say to you is that you are part of the problem, not part of the solution. Clearly, you have gotten into bed with uh, Fox News and Tucker Carlson and the Donald Trump camp and the Larry Nichols and the snake oil sales that you do. It's clearly a, an operation. What I'd like to ask you is, Alex, who are you really working for? Because you're clearly not working for the people. Is that your 25 seconds? He's got a couple seconds left. Uh, you talk about ad hominem attacks. Uh, you're, you're not getting into politics or issues or any of it. There are a lot of people in a controlled media climate like Tucker Carlson who would get fired if he came out against the globalist over the years. And I've steadily seen him get better. So I want to win a war. And I've had dinner with him and know him personally, and he's a patriot. And he's done as much as he could, and he's getting better as liberty rises. Uh, I have had Fox News offer me a, multiple TV shows, multiple television programs, asked Man Cal Muller and refused, and they couldn't believe it that I would not take them. So that's a fact. They want me to fly every weekend to New York and tape a show that'd be on Sunday. No way. Now, if they were here in Austin and I could say what I wanted, yeah, I'd be on Fox News and I'd make the point that Fox is changing. We've won. You know, we, we've taken over. So... I'm going to hold you over because uh, I want to flesh this out with you because we're going under world government. The EU is trying to censor people's speech. All this stuff's happening, and you make it about Alex Jones. Who am I oppressing? Who am I going after other than the classic leftist attack? I'm surprised you didn't throw in the Koch brothers. But now because they're openly against Trump, you can't say that. So, oh, he works for the Koch brothers. Really, I haven't seen one red cent from these people. Uh, so it's just all this pseudo-intellectual little bag of tricks. Oh, I've thrown in with the I've thrown in with the Bill of Rights, Buster. We'll be back. You know, my daughter, older daughter, she heard that like you know six, seven, eight years ago when she was little, and she goes, she she'd already been reading and she'd read some article in Texas Monthly about George Strait. And she goes, he sold more than the Beatles. What do you mean he doesn't have a dime, but what he's got is mine? And I said, sweetheart, he didn't write that song. It's, it's about a rodeo around a San Antonio who doesn't have anything. And, and so that's not George Strait talking, but George Strait would probably tell you that all he's got is being an honorable, good person. I don't know folks that know George Strait. They say he's as good as it gets. And 
I could kick myself one time. I was invited to a birthday party that Ace in the Hole was playing at, and I didn't go. It's like 100 people. George Strait was there for two hours. <laughs> I'm not a stalker, but I tell you, I really wanted to kick myself in the butt over that one. Okay, enough fanboy stuff about George Strait. Uh, but he does just live in between Austin and San Antonio. He's got a ranch out there and his family ranch south of, south of Austin. And the great part is he really comes from a ranching family, the whole nine yards, and it's pure Americana. But you know what? I don't have a dime but what I got is mine I've got some money I've got some money saved trying to run this operation for a while if they pulled everything out on us I, I mean I've got uh you know a backup not much of one but I understand what it means I don't have a dime but what I got is mine all we have is our freedoms and our integrity and our ancestors and our children and we're being robbed of that and being turned into a bunch of zombies and that's what makes me angry and I was talking to social justice warrior who's a rare, you know, if I just cared about ratings, because all I like to do is talk, warn folks about the New World Order and kind of act like a honking goose half the time, repeating some of the same stuff, and I apologize, because the technocracy, the eugenicist, at the end of the day, what really matters other than the master plan, hey, the folks running things are out to get us and are really evil, and here they are, and let's do dossiers on each one, which we've done from Soros right down the line. then it doesn't matter what they're doing grassroots or how they spin it. You know somebody is evil who's in control. The devil is at the wheel. That's what I'm getting at. And I really believe in freedom. I really believe in private property and family and the Second Amendment, the right to follow whatever religion you want or not to. I'm a liberal. I'm a Thomas Jefferson lover. Again, I'm not gay, but I would marry the Bill of Rights. Is the Bill of Rights male, though? All right, I'm going to stop that joke. It's crazy. It's crazy to sit here and, and to know I'm genuine and to know I'm honorable and to know I'm true and to see the mainstream media, the globalists, the attack dogs, all of them, all they ever try to do is to say, I'm a fraud. When I was on the BBC like three, four years ago on their big Sunday morning show, biggest show in the country, I forget the name of it, it's what the big morning show is with the top host, and there was a member of Bilderberg at the meeting coming in next, and I blow up at him and say, this isn't a game, it's not a joke. They say I'm crazy. We go to break. They go, okay, get you leave. I stop yelling. They got security guards there about to grab me, and I walk out nicely. They go on air, and they say, well, then I've videotaped the Bilderberg guy, actually, and have a conversation, but that was a minute later, sorry. He was coming out of the bathroom. Look, you saw it on YouTube. So I started taping as soon as I left. In fact, thank God, he went on air and lied like three minutes later after break and said that I had announced it's all fake, I don't mean any of this, I'm a fraud. Well, I started recording actually during the show. That's right, so I was still going. So we put that clip up on YouTube where you actually see me get up, then in my face, I leave, the Bilderberg guy's coming in, we get that on tape. I talked about this yesterday, how I tape these encounters so they can't set me up. And that's what they did with Katie Couric, so she couldn't set them up, see? People don't, we now know they're evil. We now don't just lay there and let the wolves attack. And once you get that mindset, it's game over. We'll kick their butt all day. And he got up on TV and he said, Alex Jones just said to us, he's a liar and he's a fake and doesn't mean any of it. And even the right-wing guy that was attacking me on there claiming, you know, because I don't want all these wars and I'm this big liberal, that was their attack over there. He wouldn't agree with the guy. He's like, isn't that true? The host said, the guy was like. And that's what they do. They, they, they say, you're not real. They call into doubt, hoping you're stupid hoping that when they say Donald Trump said he wants to, he hates Jews. I want to play that clip in a moment of those kids. I'm going to bring David Knight here in a moment. It's just, it's incredible. It, it, it's like, because they think you're dumb, they're just hoping you have doubt. Don't have any doubt. Donald Trump didn't say he hates Jews. Find the clip. Obama said it was free under Obamacare. And he said, he, you keep your doctor. That was all lies. And it doesn't matter what social justice warrior says. Okay? It doesn't matter. My family was, and I'm proud of this, literally at the heart of starting the Texas Revolution. 
on my mom's side. We, we raised Colonel Travis's son. We, I mean, on my dad's side, the Revolutionary War. Both sides of my family on the Mayflower. I'm so proud of my ancestors. They were just, almost all of them were just these awesome, super badass patriots. And you sit there and you call in and you tell me I'm not for real. And that I'm an operation. You, you don't make me sad because you attack my good name. You make me sad because you're such a dishonorable coward. And you're not going to win. You understand that? No matter what you do. I intend to win. We're going to take the country back. And our ideas will end up being on national television in the end. They're even saying that in the New York Times. They're panicking. Freedom trumps all your garbage all day. And I don't mean that as a pun. And I don't completely trust Trump. But he knows which way the wind's blowing. Bare minimum. And I think he's good at heart. You don't have to be perfect, but man, who wants to gut the country and make everybody poor? So you can all be equally miserable. So I want to go to Eric and Josh and Jeff and Chris and all of it. This guy, these people are always the same. He'll make statements, and I'll let me talk. Are you going to let me now, Alex? Because he craves the control. So they want you poured under their control so they dole out and tell their OCD, and, and they tell you how everything runs. Don't tell me how to behave. Don't tell me what to do. Don't do all your little, your little OCD clicks and ticks. Just make your counter statements for 60 seconds or longer if you'd like. Uh, Mr. Social Justice Warrior, go ahead. Three hours of you talking about the fake left-right paradigm, followed by 10 minutes of commercials, richmoney.rich.com, snake oil commercials, products that I've ordered that don't work. You are the epitome, Mr. Jones, of a charlatan. You're <laughs> leading, you're, you're actually leading sheep to the chessboard. That's all you're doing. And now that you've really shown your true colors by climbing into bed with the likes of people like, oh, let's see, Donald Trump, Larry Nichols, et cetera, et cetera, you have shown your hand to be what you are, Alex, a true fraudster. You're just in it for the money. I mean, your whole, your whole staging, your whole marketing, your whole presentation with your suits and your, you, you're just, I, you, you know, all of the money that you've made, you've made it on the ignorance of the audience that tunes into you. All right. Uh, I'm going to respond to you now. You talk for one minute. You understand how local affiliates and radio works. There are network ads. There are local ads. There are syndication ads. There's like four or five different types of ads, depending on how you're listening. Okay. So I hear that ad you mentioned all over national radio. It's a national buy. It's on the network. And I have been offered those type of sponsors. I don't take them. When you hear it, it's my voice or one of my reporters. And I absolutely love X2. When I'm, when, I, when I'm having allergies or coughing, I mean, lung cleanse works great for me. On third-party sites, it's got five-star reviews by the hundreds and hundreds. So absolutely, I am proud that we open up a shop to promote freedom and fund ourselves uh, then they sent founding fathers over to France and sit there at parties and beg and sell little American flags, you know, try to get money for the revolution. Most revolutionaries, you know, rob banks and stuff. And some revolutions, people have their wives whore out, and people see that as honorable in some revolutions. I wouldn't do that. Uh, so, you know, we're not having our wives at a brothel to fund this. We're not robbing banks. We're, like, selling air purifiers and water purifiers that if you're not using your nuts, that I personally use, I'm going to skip this network break here, and... You don't say where my politics are wrong. Larry Nichols is scum. Larry Nichols, if you don't know who he is, never talks about it. I know people that were in the military at the time. He was a Green Beret officer who fought communists all over Latin America and Africa and was highly decorated and was sent by the CIA to basically be embedded with the Clintons because Clinton was CIA and prepare him for the governorship. Uh, and that guy, when the Clintons started killing kids, he went public and they tried to kill him. Uh, and, 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 you know, the guy... It's like Christ is on the cross, and he's got, you know, the, the, you know, the thief and the murderer beside him. I forget which one it is. And, you know, one of them apologizes and repents, and God felt it and said, you'll be with me in paradise tonight. And you sit there with Larry Nichols calling him a charlatan. When I happen to know that there have been times when he's supposed to be on the show, and he is, they're there with defibrillators. That guy has been uh, died.
Okay, I'm not, he, wanted, he didn't want to talk about it. I am. That guy has been dying lately, and they're in there defibrillating him to get back up and fight, and you sit there and you call him a wimp when you're nothing. I don't know what your problem is. I don't know what your deal is, but I'm sick of it. You sit there and you, you, you say someone that's challenged the Clinton crime machine is a piece of filth. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask questions. Do you, social justice warrior, do you support Hillary Rodham Clinton? Because you don't like people that don't like her. How long are you going to support the Jewish Zionist uh, paradigm, Alex? Oh, my how God. To the total. To go ahead. Tell me about the Jews. Go ahead. You have 60 how long, seconds. How long are you going to hide behind the 10,000-pound elephant in the room. When are you going to talk about, instead of calling people globalist, Alex, why don't you spell it out for your audience? It's Jewish Zionist. David Duke handed your ass in a can, and you did all, the only thing that you did was sit there and try to derail this man, as you've tried to derail me now, and as you've tried to insinuate that I just called Larry Nichols, a charlatan. I called you specifically a charlatan, Mr. Jones. No, you said people, you said bad people like like Larry Nichols. Oh, hold on. Let's just stop right there. Stop right there. I went and interviewed Louis Farrakhan to really try to have a real interview, and he was genuine and real, even though I don't agree with some of the things he said, and so he talked 90% of the time. David Duke, we timed it out, talked almost 70% of the time and bitched and whined the whole time that I wasn't letting him talk when I was trying to bring up eugenics and how we're all being targeted by this, things like Gardasil. And he didn't want that, okay? And so he didn't want access to my audience to try to have a real discussion, or his, his, his supporters didn't. And man, I have people tell me I'm Jewish and that I get orders from Israel and that I get Jewish money, and none of it's true. And you act like you're on some high and mighty or the Koch brothers or the Catholic Church. I've had all these mentally ill groups. I fund myself selling products and having a few sponsors that are mine and that I endorse. Um, it, it's, it's just crazy that there are a lot of black people that have been brainwashed and are racist and weird who hate me. I don't hate other black people because some black people are weird. There are a lot of weird white people that hate me. I mean, I'm so hated by the white supremacist people because they're so government-connected and run. That's come out so many times because... They want to brand the anti-globalism movement as anti-black, anti-Hispanic, anti-Jew. And that's a management tactic by the big media to make it all that. Is there a Jewish mafia that's involved in it, heavily involved, commanding many parts of it, like Sumner Redstone? Absolutely. And I just come in and say globalism attacks everybody, and we should come together against it. And most Jews aren't part of the Jewish mafia. And there's all sorts of other mafias involved. This is a eugenics, scientific, technocracy system at the top. It uses all these other paradigms of management. And so I'm my own person. And so I choose not to bash Protestants, Catholics, Jews, anybody. The Pope comes out and says Christ, you know, was like ISIS and we should be ashamed of our Christian roots. Or I think he said horrified by it or whatever it was. And I'm like, that is an anti-Christian statement. This man is evil. By his own words, he is blasphemous, okay? I love Catholics. They're good people. I, I love the Jews I know in my life. My whole life have just been really smart, cool people. I, my dad has friends, you know. One guy's a geologist, friend from college. We went on these long geology trips when I was a kid in Big Bend and Texas and Arizona, and just really smart and cool and nice and cared about, you know. All, all I've ever had is, is Jews I knew that were nice and, and were actually there and intellectual and wanted to help me. Okay, then I see these evil people that happen to be Jewish up there. Those people that sold out, you know, somebody like uh, Alan Greenspan, was like a Ron Paul in the 60s and 70s. He was writing books, he was writing white papers about the Federal Reserve and how it was private and evil and go back to gold or the New World Order. They bought him out like Anakin Skywalker and he became Darth Vader. So it, again, it's just crazy. It's like Italians. It's like, I'm not gonna hire Italians because there's an Italian mafia and you know one-tenth of one percent of Italians are in a mafia. It's, it's just, it's idiotic. I made a film I produced called Fabled Enemies about criminal elements of Israel and their involvement in 9-11 that was the most hardcore out there, and it made the Jew haters 50 times matter. I made a film, well, a terror storm, that had a section on Gulf of Tonkin, but also a section on a bunch of other false flags, like the USS Liberty. It made the Jew haters just see. They said, no, 
No one else does false flags, Jews. No, there's evil Jews, there's good Jews. There's good Germans, there's bad Germans. There's good Chinese, there's bad Chinese. There's good Mexicans, there's bad Mexicans. You judge a tree by its fruits, and you guys just fall back because you're better than anybody. You can just say someone works for the Jews and sit back and be moral and be superior, like a social justice warrior, that you're just like them. That's why you called yourself that today. You didn't say, I am a person that believes in a Jewish conspiracy. You'd have been put on air. We let you guys on. We don't screen your calls. But you said you were a social justice warrior, and out of their mouths, out of the mouths of babes, you will hear truth. You're right. They're just like they show up and they scream, you're a racist, you hate Mexicans, or white guy. You, 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 you hate Jews, like these little Jewish kids saying that Donald Trump hates Jews. It's the exact same thing. You can't even see it. You're not an intellectual. You're a pseudo-intellectual who lines up these things that makes you feel like you've got all the answers. I mean, you can sit there and read all these things about Jews running this and Jews running that and then just project it onto Jews as if they weren't there, your whole world would be okay. Sumner Redstone hates the fact that I attack him for his anti-family activities and don't point out that he is a super hardcore racist Jew. But old-fashioned Judaism was just like every other group saying our group's the best, everybody else's filth. That's tribalism. But I don't dislike Sumner Redstone because he's an old Jewish guy. I dislike him because he's anti-human. See, this is the spirit of the people we face, not their cover. And you think you're looking deeper, you're not. And all these anti-Semitic people that are into all this stuff, I know they overproject that and demonize and the Israeli lobby's out of control. I cover it all. I talk about the Chinese lobby, the Saudi Arabian lobby, the Israeli lobby being out of control. Stop trying to run our country. And they go, you piece of filth, Jones. He was covering up for the Jews today when he talked about Israel and their lobby and how it's a little out of control. No, it's all out of control, Alex. So look, it's about you being in the winning club. You're the purest, you're the good man. So just say good night to the bad guy. Go ahead, tell me I work for the Jews. Go ahead, social justice warrior. Get yourself a gold star over at Stormfront. Unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. You, you, you use, you, you spend 10 minutes, 10 minutes, and you don't give the, the, the caller a chance. To spew some more false allegations? You're the ones making the allegations. You're not worried about the New World Order. You're worried I'm working for the Jews over here because I'm promoting free market and family and Second Amendment and religious rights and sovereignty. Oh, my God, I'm so bad. What is it I'm doing that's bad? Tell me what I'm doing that isn't promoting freedom. Tell me. Other than I work for the Jews, tell me. I'm waiting. The truth is I have the Jewish lobby constantly attacking me my whole, my whole career. That's the truth. But you're over here saying I work for these people, so explain it to me. Go ahead. Explain it to me right now. You have Jewish lobbies attacking you, Alex? For goodness sakes, give me a darn break. What you're doing is trying to obfuscate and confuse your Globalist audience. lobbies. There's lots of lobbies. Well, what do you mean? The fact is the mainstream media attacks me, calls me anti-Semitic. Okay, I'm done talking to you. I mean, you just hear that guy. He listens.